Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today we're going to look at some sticker and button mods that you can do for the Miu Mini. Now these are all courtesy of the Sakura Retro Modding Store on Etsy, and I'll give a link to that in the video description below. And there's a variety of things that you can do through their store. In addition to the front sticker and buttons, you also have some back stickers you can play with as well. And there's a good amount of choice as well, so depending on which model Miu Mini you have, there are plenty of different solutions. And luckily I have a few different Miu Mini models, and so we'll test out a few here in this video. And there are a lot of neat solutions that are coming out for this device, and I'm going to do a separate video to highlight some of those. So be on the lookout this week for things like some grips, new stands, as well as some handmade cases. But for now, let's dive into this one from their store. Now, Sakura Retro Modding is based out of France, so depending on where you live, shipping might take a while. For me, it takes a couple weeks. And I ordered quite a few things here, but it does look like he sent in a couple extras here to show off on the channel. In addition to the Mio Mini accessories, I also got some things for the Analog Pocket, which you may have seen in my review video last week. And one of my favorite things about this store is the attention to detail that this person has when it comes to even the packaging. So for example, each of the buttons will come with a QR code that you can scan to get more instructions, and each of the buttons will come in a 3D printed case as well. To start, we have some black buttons here. These are all convex, so they are rounded around the edges. Here are some buttons that are themed after the North American Super Nintendo. The light purple ones are concave, while the others are convex. And here are some red buttons with both convex and concave shapes to them. We're going to use this with my NES version. Additionally, we have some Game Boy inspired colors here, as well as translucent blue, which I think will work really well with a Sega themed Mio Mini. And finally, we have some translucent pink ones. I think this would look really good with the translucent blue model. So those are the button options we have to work with. Let's take a look at some of these stickers that we have inside. Okay, to start, we have a Sega themed one here. Again, I think the translucent blue buttons would look really good with this. And then we have a couple different Super Nintendo stickers here, both for the V1 and V2 Mew Mini. Additionally, there's one theme for the NES, and then two different Game Boy colored ones. One looks like for the DMG, and the other one must be for the Pocket or the Light. In my second batch of stickers, I have a couple other things. For example, I ordered some analog Pocket holographic stickers, so I'll put those aside for the other video. But we do have some nice game themed matte back stickers right here. And so we'll also try one of these out as well. But I gotta be honest, the ones I was most interested in are the holographic ones. As you can see here, these look fantastic. And so I'm pretty excited about putting those ones on. Also, I love these 1-800 Nintendo hotline numbers right here as well. All in all, I think we've got a good amount of combinations to work with to really personalize our Miu Minis. Now, if you're going to use a back sticker, I would recommend taking off this Miu logo sticker here on the back. And I've actually already done this with a lot of my Miu Mini models. You will just take some tweezers and pull it right off. But for now, let's go ahead and take the device apart and start swapping out some of these buttons. Now, I've already done a couple videos where I've taken a Miu Mini apart, but real quickly, you're going to have six screws altogether. Two of them are hidden underneath the battery. After you remove the screws, the back of the case will pull right off. Another thing I recommend doing is removing the ribbon cable. So you're going to want to use some tweezers to gently remove this tape here, and then flip the little switch, and then pull the ribbon cable right out. What I do from here is I usually grab it right around that USB-C connector, and then pull it from the left side to the right. And it should just pop out, but be sure not to get the volume wheel stuck. And removing the buttons is pretty easy. All you have to do is remove that rubber membrane here on the left, and then pop out the remaining buttons with your finger, and then add the new ones. And I'm going to start with the red buttons here. Like I mentioned, some of these are convex, some are concave. So just make sure that the convex ones, the one with the indentation in the center, are going to be on the X and Y position. Other than that, it's super easy. It's just a one for one swap. Okay, once you've swapped out the buttons, go ahead and put the rubber membrane back in its place, and then add the PCB in the reverse order. So make sure the volume wheel is put in first, and then kind of angle it together so that everything fits into place. You shouldn't have to force anything to make it fit. From there, go ahead and secure the ribbon cable. It may take a little bit of time to coax it in. Then go ahead and clamp it down shut, and then reapply that tape. And if this is your first time working with a Miu Mini or a small electronics device like this, just take your time. There's no rush. After that, I recommend putting in those first two screws, the ones that are underneath the battery, and then flip it over to make sure that all of your buttons are arranged correctly. And yeah, looks good to me here, so let's go ahead and put the rest together. And there's no real special trick to this. What I usually do is I put the battery in next, make sure it's nice and tightly arranged, and then I put the remainder of the screws back into place. And yeah, so there we go. Now we have new buttons on our black transparent Miu Mini. So now let's start messing with the stickers. We're going to start with the holographic sticker here on the back. I'm going to give it a quick wipe just to make sure there's no dust on the back here. And then adding the sticker is just a matter of lining it up correctly and then just putting it into place. And yeah, this looks fantastic. I love the transparent black here and then the holographic to kind of complement that. Okay, now let's try that Nintendo Hotline sticker. We'll just try it here at the bottom of the case. And same thing here, you just want to line it up, take your time, and just kind of put it there. 
The nice thing about these matte stickers is that they're very sturdy, and so you're not really gonna get any bends or creases in it at all. Okay, we're looking good. You know, honestly, at this point, I feel like I'm almost done with just kind of putting this together, but I am curious to see how that Nintendo sticker is gonna look on the front here, so we are gonna add that as well. To be honest, with a transparent device like this, I kind of don't want to cover all that transparency up with a sticker. But for the sake of science in this channel, let's go ahead and do it anyway. To set this up, you just want to slowly peel it apart. And then same thing like with all the other stickers, just line it up nice and carefully and take your time. And just like with the Nintendo Hotline sticker, this one's super sturdy, and so I wouldn't expect to have any creases or tears or anything else like that. And so yeah, here we are. We now have an NES-themed Miu Mini. And I do think it looks pretty sharp. I'm just not really sure if I'm going to keep it like this forever just because I love having a transparent device. But all the same, there's a real appeal here to have a Nintendo-themed device like this. It just seems really fitting when playing a Nintendo game. Okay, this is pretty fun, so let's try it with a Game Boy-themed Mew Mini instead. We're going to use the gray version. And we got a lot of different games to choose from, and I appreciate that these are all Game Boy games as well. But I think that Super Mario Land 2, the six golden coins, is going to be the best fit for me. I like the pop of color here, especially on a gray unit like this. And same thing, super easy to apply. And we're also going to add that Nintendo Hotline sticker as well. The combination of these two is just like super nostalgic. It looks really nice. Now, on the front, I decided not to swap out the buttons for this model in particular. I think that the coloring here is already fitting for the Game Boy, and so I thought, well, let's just leave it like that. And same thing here, I'm just going to gently apply this sticker, and yeah, it looks pretty nice. I like that the color matching on this is just about perfect with the case itself. That probably took a lot of work to get right. Now, the feel of the front of the device is a little bit more matte feeling than the original case itself, so you may or may not like that. And I will say that one of the things that does kind of bother me a little bit about these stickers is that you can see where the sticker ends and the case begins. For me, that little difference right there just kind of throws it off a little bit. Now, obviously, it would be impossible to make this seamless, but it is something I did want to make note of. Okay, let's do one more swap, this time with the SNES one using the white Mew Mini. And I'm going to add all of these buttons here, just make sure they're all arranged. I'm just going to kind of speed through this so you don't have to see it all over again, but exact same process as we did with the black one. And so yeah, there we go. We have some upgraded buttons on our white Mew Mini. And to top it all off, let's add that Super Nintendo sticker as well. And yeah, this looks pretty good as well. Very nostalgic looking too. To top it off, let's add that holographic sticker on the back, and then of course the Nintendo Hotline sticker as well. All right, now we've got a fully decked out Miu Mini here. Now I will say, much like with that gray model, it is very apparent here where the sticker ends and the case begins. And so if that does bother you, then this may not be something that's a good fit for you. But altogether, I do think it looks pretty nice. Although admittedly, I'm a little bit torn because I really love the color buttons on the white Miu Mini as well. So I may end up going back sometime in the future. One thing to note is I didn't pull off all of these speaker grill stickers, and so one of them got stuck in here. And this was an easy fix, I just used some tweezers and pulled it right out. Okay, and the last thing I ordered from this store was a Miu Mini stand. Now if you watch my analog pocket video from last week, I have the exact same stand but for that device. And it's the same thing here, it comes in three different parts, they're all 3D printed. And so it's just a matter of using the base, putting the second one inside, and then sliding in the stand part of it. And yeah, this is what it looks like here. I've actually been leaving it on my nighttime dresser, and so I actually have this exact Mew Mini just propped up on my nightstand. Now one thing that would have been awesome is the ability to charge it while in the stand, but I understand that that would probably have made the whole process a lot more complicated. But either way, if you're looking for a lightweight stand to show off your Mew Mini, this one is not bad. Okay, so really that's about it for this video. I just wanted to show off some of the options that you have available for the Miu Mini when it comes to sticker and button mods from the Sakura Retro Modding store. And there are a lot of other options that are available, so check out that store. There are some pretty good pictures there as well. I'm not getting paid for any of these links or anything. I'm just a big fan of some of the things that he's doing with this store. But of course, they're not perfect. Like I mentioned, I may go back to the rainbow buttons with my Super Nintendo one. And I am thinking about removing the face sticker from my black transparent one as well. Either way, it's a lot of fun for me to test out these little mods just to kind of personalize your device, so let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.